Hey guys, and welcome to the Captain Fizz and Mask Guy show. Tonight we'll be talking uh, about uh, a dearly, you know, departed member of the Star Wars family. And we're going to talk about Gotham and a bunch of other fun stuff. And guess what? We have a live audience, so God only knows what's going to happen. So, hit the music! guys, welcome back to the Captain Fizz and Mask Guy Show. I am Captain Fizz. And greetings once again from the seventh moon of thunder. I am that Mask Guy. And I have to say something. After our last show, we, we had complaints that we were not muzzled enough. Oh, uh, just a certain uh, radio no, no, listener gonna, to the not, show went off. We're not going to put names. We're going to state that you cannot muzzle me. This is our show. Our rules our game, and this is the white mess experiment. <laughs> the white mess experiment. And there you go. There's That's pretty much where this show is going to go. It's unfiltered. So, yes, uh, our regular listener uh, at LazyNerd204 went off and did mention that uh, my comment last week about something green was slightly inappropriate, but he found it extremely... Oh, we'll be honest. Hum- you were talking about your green dildo. I wasn't talking necessarily about my green dildo. Then you just admitted you have one. And I just walked right into that one. Yes, you did. But, you know, not (laughs) once have we ever said that this show would be PG-13. Not once. Never once. So, I will not apologize for the comments. I will say that if you were offended by it, I am sorry that you were offended so easily by what I say. And that's exactly, that's all I gotta say. (laughs) That's all you gotta say about that. I'm offendable. You are offendable. I, do I offend you? No. Okay, good. Then we're okay. So let's talk about the big somewhat news. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You're going to start this because I'm going to cry. I'm going to start this, man. I'm, I am crying already thinking about this. I know. I'm going to wipe your tears. No, I'm not. No, you're not. How dare you even consider it? I, you know, um, as people uh, are probably aware, uh, Kenny Baker, uh, who's best known as play, physically playing R2-D2 in the uh, first uh, six Star Wars movies, has uh, recently passed away. Uh, 83. At 80, 83 years old, uh, probably one of the best uh, little person actors uh, known worldwide. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it just... I mean, I, I guess, uh, you know, it shouldn't come as a shock as, as you said, he was, you know, eight, you know, 84 years old, but I mean, it, you know, it, you know, definitely caught me in the feels, so to speak, when I heard about it, you know? Well, it, it's an iconic, you know, character, uh, you know, wh- whether they made no, uh, you know, words or lines or anything, he idolizes like that character, which was big on what we grew up with. Well, yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, yeah, I mean, he didn't make any of the noises, but, I mean, he was the one who physically went off and made it, uh, you know, R2-D2 go off and move around. And so, I mean, a lot of the emotion that came across was through his, you know, his physical work in it. Yes. And, uh, I mean, he he was also in, you know, several other roles as well, but, I mean, there is none more iconic and I guess the kind of the first clue for me that, you know, he wasn't necessarily doing that great was when I found out that he was, uh, in the last Star Wars movie, he was simply a consultant on R2-D2 instead of, you know, physically playing the role, uh, as he's done in, you know, previous movies, so... It definitely was a big warning sign, and 
it's unfortunate because it does happen and you know with the movies being as old and ancient as they are it's bound to happen so i i stumbled across this uh, uh i i'm not going to go off and read it all but peter mayhew went off and uh wrote uh, something on uh, kenny baker uh, and this is one of the most special friends i made on the movie was kenny baker who was inside the robot called R2-D2. We found that we had similar challenges in life. Kenny is a little person and he has problems finding clothes to fit sitting in an airplane seat and driving a car. In a different way, I had the same types of problems. We both had to adapt to things to our size. And, I mean, there's more to it, but uh, it was... The, it was end up. It was a, a really heartfelt tribute to uh, a, a dear friend of his. It, 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 was, it seems interesting. It just the you know, I Kate Baker seemed to really have uh, a really good relationship not only with uh, with Peter Mayhew but as with David Prowse as well, who is another you know very tall individual. So it's in, in one way, I mean, it seems kind of funny that he would have relationships with people that are complete opposite of him, but at the same time, as Peter Mayhew has said in his tribute, it did make sense because they had a lot of the same challenges. Yeah, well, and, you know, and it's true. D- different people, you know, different situations, but, you know, same issues. Um, you know, obviously, w- with Peter Mayhew, his health has been an issue, especially as of lately, and a lot of it is due to, you know, his size. Giant, and, and, uh, and, yeah, I, I don't think he has a former giantism, but, I mean, Peter... I pretty mean, damn like, close. I mean, the guy's legitimately, like, seven foot two, so, uh, I mean, his... The his, old, only person who legitimately made me feel tiny. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, you and I have both met Peter Mayhew, and he was absolutely, you know, ginormous. Yes. So he connects to us, and, uh, so, yeah, I mean... I'm not really sure, you know, what more the gloss. There, there's say not on a this, whole lot more we can say. I mean, uh, you okay, Baker? Wherever you are, we're going to uh, dedicate the rest of the, the show to you, even though we're not going to be talking about anything else. Star Wars. No, no, no. no but um, we might as well move into a little bit of our next segment, of course. Um, you know, a little bit before our musical interlude break thing. Well, I mean, for those people who've listened to past episodes, you guys are very well aware that, you know, the Captain and I are, are huge fans of the series Gotham. Yes. And they're going to be introducing several uh, new characters uh, this season, including Killer Croc. Uh, they are the uh, they are introducing, I, can't, I don't remember what the character's name is, but it's played by the same young man who plays Bruce Wayne. So... Uh, it's kind of, I guess, is going to really mess around with pretty much everyone, probably pretend to be Bruce. Uh, but they're also going to, they're introducing an, a new actress to go off and play Ivy. Uh, I, I'm not sure why they decided to go off and... Um, there, there's a certain character that was released uh, during the end of last season who has this ability when they touch touch you, they, it takes away um, some of your life, so to speak, and actually ages you. So that, that's basically what they're implying, is that this character somehow got uh, hold of, uh, of Ivy and increased her, her age, which I think is a very unique aspect of the show. It definitely speeds it along for her character development um, and makes maybe the next season a little bit more about her and less about, you know, Selena Kyle, Bruce Wayne, uh, some of these other characters. Well, right? I mean... Gotham, in a lot of ways, I mean, it, it's, you know, going to be a coming of a story for Bruce Wayne, but, I mean, the, the center of Gotham really has been about the villains, and so it's difficult because you have to try to find different ways, you know, to go off and try to introduce them. I know that we're also going to need to see the Mad Hatter on the season Which as well. uh, is actually played by one of the guys who was in The Walking Dead, which I'm excited about. Okay, yeah, and... You wouldn't know this. I probably wouldn't. Uh, because, Shame on you. Well, you know what? I mean, there's only so many hours in the day, and I would rather watch other shows than a show about zombies, but that's just me. Why? We, we live in a world about zombies. Why not learn a little bit more about them? I'm a walking zombie most of the time, so I don't really want to watch... That explains the stench. Ah, shut up. <laughs> but... 
I don't want to go off and watch a show about pretty much how I feel, you know, all the time, you know. No, you know, I'm excited to see the Killer Croc. Um, what I really would like to see them do is introduce him before he becomes the mutation that he is best known for. I'd like to see the whole development before all that. I suspect he's probably going to just be another one of those experiments from Indian Hill, though. So I, I, I really, as much as, you know, I... It'd be awesome, you know, introduce them. Like, I'd really like the whole other aspect. You know, oh. somebody fresh off the street or whatever, new to the town, you know, there's no mutation, no nothing else. You get to learn, you know, the development along along the way. And, I mean, that's kind of the way I uh, I would like to see it as well. I, I'm kind of fearful that they're going to just use Indian Hill as a cop-out to try to explain away so many different things. Like, we got to see, you know, the development, you know, the, during the first two seasons of Penguin and, you know, Enigma and, you know, a lot of the other classic villains. But it really feels like they're taking shortcuts now to go off and try to introduce other villains to the series. I definitely will agree. Um, you know, with the exceptions, though, Poison Ivy has always been, a, you know, not a huge figure, but someone you really knew from the, from the beginning who she was. Uh, Catwoman was another one that you r knew right from the beginning who she was. And you started to see the development of the relationship between her and Bruce Wayne. You know, the whole love-hate, you know, best friends one moment, en enemies the other. You know, that love triangle, so, so to speak. Yeah, I, I don't know. It, again, maybe I'm being too h harsh on all this because, I mean... And I sort of want to see, you know, the, the villains, you know, be treated classically. And, you know, part of the problem I'm seeing is, you know, Poison Ivy was legitimately, uh, you know, be, you know, went on to become, uh, a, oh, I'm not even going to be able to pronounce the word right, but she's going to, you know, actually studies plants. And yes, so, herbolatist. And, yes, thank you. And... Her botanist, yes. Her, yes, we're getting help from our live audience, you know. Woohoo, okay. live audience for the win. <laughs> and this is what, <laughs> this is what there you, you go. This, this is, is what you get when only one person promises no live audience and the other person's the one with the phone. Ha This is true. I overrule. There you go. But I mean so I'm kinda of interested to see how, you know, if we're gonna see more of that with Ivy. And speaking of, you know, hmm. of this, uh, there, it was hinted, I believe, at uh, San Diego Comic-Con when they were doing the whole thing with uh, on Gotham that we might have already seen Harley Quinn. Yes, um, they, they've, they're actually going to introduce her uh, more this season. Apparently this was a character that they first introduced around uh, when Jerome was introduced, a.k.a. Joker, possibly, uh, and it, and as part of, They you haven't know, exactly suggested when it was, but it, there's well, been I, talk that I, maybe I, as a member of the, uh, the, you know, Joker, you know, yes. uh, a cult that we went off and we saw near the end of last yeah. season. Yeah, um, they also basically said, this is somebody that when we finally see who they're revealing it to be, someone that we have gotten to know already as a person, that we will feel that we already know them. So I have a funny feeling they're going to really... Uh, throw a wrench into what everybody thinks about who, you know, different characters are. It, it quite possibly could. Another thing I, was, I found interesting uh, while, you know, reading up on all this is that they are planning to bring Jerome back, but we will probably won't actually see him fully return until season four of the show. Yeah, they're going to tease it towards the end of season three, pretty much as we predicted. Yeah. Um, and then a big full out thing at the beginning of season four, which is ultimately going to reveal the fact that he is the Joker, or at least a personality of the Joker. Well, it, again, going back to what we discussed a couple weeks ago, where, I mean, there isn't, you know, it's turned out there isn't one Joker, but in fact, you know, three different Jokers, at least, in the, <laughs> the, the current, uh, you know, DC universe. Yeah. Um, they're also implying uh, there's three different things they're talking about this year. Uh, Nigma really embraces his Riddler persona more often this season. Becomes a very, very big factor. Um, Alfred gets a love interest. Well, that's always interesting. It is. And, you know, and it definitely with, you know, Bruce.